So what? Uh, I just look at the camera or I look at you? I mean, you can look at the camera, but you can look at me all you want. That was raised, that was raised. <laughs> Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to Love Your Community. We out here, uh, yeah. season two, season three, season two. Season episode two. Episode two. I don't know my episodes anymore. <laughs> such a smart man, such a smart man. Such a smart man. I'll put it right here, editing wise. Yeah. Alright, what's one. up bro? I'm You're here welcome. with Luis. Luis, tell them about yourself. What's up, guys? I'm Luis. I'm a sophomore at Achieve. Um, I'm, I'm really athletic. I like to play basketball and weightlift and run track. Kobe? 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, this is Luis. He's actually Ray's little brother. I'm not sure if you guys, if you're OGs, you know this, but I made an episode, I think, two years ago. Two years ago. Two years his ago. brother, we basically talked about like just our junior of high school. It's funny because now you're going to be a junior. How do you feel about that? I mean, I feel, I feel ready. I feel ready, but at the same time, I feel scared because I know I'm going to take a lot of college classes next year because of my major. So Major? Are you a minor? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, nah, dude, I could not. I think in my junior year, this sounds so bad, my mom and dad are probably hearing this. I dropped, I think, two classes really if i'm being honest with you i dropped stars and galaxies shout out to my professor we're here at my college right now so if we're at stc so. we're at stc so if any professors hear me right now pretend you hear this i had this class where my professor would assign like four page essays for three questions for three so questions. like the question would be like what's four. your favorite color he'll expect like a whole like page okay. or it'll be like what color are the stars like he wouldn't expect that from me so I dropped that class. And then I dropped this class called Design 1. My art majors know what I'm talking about. Mm. It was kind of hard, but I don't know, like my professor was very old school -y and I didn't really need it for what I'm studying, so I just like dropped it. Yeah, so so far I've only taken sociology here at SCC. It's a, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's not hard. Like, like you really have to pay attention to understand, but it's, just, it's not hard, but my professor was really cool. But what I didn't like is that she would have like these presentations every Tuesday and Thursday. Like a whole presentation every Tuesday and Thursday. Every Tuesday, Thursday. So basically you're saying that you had like two lectures, basically. No, you're like week. write notes nonstop. Oh. Dude, we do that for my geology class that I'm supposed to have in like 40 minutes right now. Yeah. But basically every Monday is lecture, every Wednesday is presentation. But what? I'll be honest with you, what me, my friend Jose and Carlos do yeah. is we take pictures of me fall asleep in class. That, is. that sounds so bad, um, well, but we still do it. We're managing, we're passing. I have like an 80 in that class. Do so, you have a picture right now that you want to show to the audience? I don't do wanna... think I have a photo of me falling asleep in that class, but I have a picture of Jose. What about your friends? Like what classes are they taking or whatever? Well, right now at STC, I'm only taking art and like the rest are like regular high school classes like Spanish and math and all those. Espanol. Hablame Espanol. <clears throat> ¿Qué onda, papi? Te quiero, mama, te quiero mucho, mam mamacita. <laughs> te quiero más, mi amor. <laughs> nah, dude. I feel bad. I took Luis from his friend group like 20 minutes ago. We were like chilling in the library. We were drawing characters oh, yeah. and I just took him. Shout out Javi, Jocelyn, Javi number two. Jade. Oh, Javi else? number two. Javi Ooh. number two. It was a Black Javi, White Javi, Jocelyn, uh, Alexis, and Jade. Alexis. Dude, I asked Alexis. like random people in my school like who they think the hottest guy in my school was. And Alexis was like, um, not me. And I was like, uh -uh. I was like, dude, there's like no way you just like said that like you're not hot. But not like in a funny way, but like that's like saying like you don't look good. I was like, bro. Domingo, like, bro. Domingo. Domingo's really hot, Loki. Domingo, I have no comment. For me, I feel like it'll be Eddie, low-key. Eddie, like, like Eddie Stabolito. I mean, he's not like the most handsome dude, but like he's like, <laughs> he's like really smart. He's really smart. Smart, nah, dude. But foul. like low-key foul. Nah, if he, if he has to dream here. Like I want, like I've been growing my hair. Like I think. the hair, like this. Yeah, but Latina told Kearney, because I've been growing my hair. I think for four, four or five months. The last time I had like a trimmer cut was when they took our senior portraits. No, senior pictures. I don't even know. They made me dress fancy one day. Like, well, I mean, yeah, it's a portrait, so like you're gonna yeah. have to dress fancy. Like me and all the boys were putting on glasses. Your brother actually took a photo of me in glasses. 
I don't know, it was like a funny word thing. Wait, but like, besides like, like saying that like, so and so is hot, would you ever see yourself dating one of your friends? Dating, wow. Ooh. <laughs> well, that's if they say yes. That's it. But, but yeah. Yes? Yeah. I feel like I would. Hey, yo, Javi, I'm coming for you, bro. About to come up with that proposal paper. Javi, if you're watching this, both Javis, I love the both of you very much. Your skin color does not matter. You're both very cute. <gasps> it's not your tone. It's yourself. I'm kidding. <laughs> nah, I'm asking that question because, like, I think two or three people asked me. They were like, are one of your friends dating each other? We had a, a photo shoot, I think, two weeks ago. Yeah. We went to Philly 77, and they asked two of my friends, Ozzy and Tony, if they were dating I guess I had the Lovers Club t-shirt. Oh. <laughs> we were laughing because we were like, no, they're just like really good friends. Really good friends, yeah. Anyway, really that's how it starts friends. though. Yo, okay, sorry, real interrupting. I got an email saying that one of my pieces are gonna be in the student exhibition for art. Let's go. Let's go. All right, anyways, sorry. Every podcast is filmed in real life, nothing scripted. Shout out to my boy Jonathan, but for real, he's like the most creative guy I know. The most hardworking, he has his own brand while taking college classes, bro. He's gonna graduate this year. So give a round of applause for my boy Jonathan. You're thanking yourself because you have your own, he has my Leatherman, bro. Oh yeah, I do. I'm a, I might get my own next year, maybe. Who knows, who knows? Who I also think you'll get the memorial one, the purple one or the blue one. Yeah, the blue one. Fuck me, you didn't get it. You didn't want to, you just didn't get like the thing. Probably next year when I join basketball, I'm gonna get one. You're gonna be Troy Bolt. Is that him? Troy Bolton from High School Musical? Yeah, Troy Bolton. Together. Yeah. Together. Forever. Forever. <laughs> nah, dude. I, bring, I, I don't know, like, I think High School Musical was kind of funny. And I feel like it applies to, like, general high school. The dating, like, what's that girl's yeah, name? Yeah, like the Gabriella, dating. Gabriella and Troy. Like, they caught feelings. They dated. Wasn't she, like, the children captain of, like... I don't even know, dude. I don't remember, but that was such a long time ago. I'm sorry, I watched the movie when it was, like, 2008 or 2009. But yeah, like they dated, they ended things, then graduation, they got back together. And I was like, That's yeah. Funny. I don't know, re relationships are funny, like in movies or like compared to real life. Like when I started doing high school, I thought it was generally gonna be like high school musical. Oh, yeah, me too. Well, mine is the whole dancing on the tables part, but just like the like, whole like <laughs> color, like a rainbow kind of thing. Like, I feel like childhood movies, like, just give us this idea of what high school's gonna be like, but it's not the entire picture of high school. Like, like for me, when I watch High School Musical, like I feel like it was gonna be like people dancing on the tables, and and, and like the janitor just there, like a vibing. Dude, I love our janitor. Like I told him right now in the morning, but I was He's like, the best. I was like, every best. morning I see him. I'm like, good morning, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good morning, sir. Later, sir. Cause like I don't know. Like I feel like people don't pay attention to the janitor. Like I love him so much. Like the janitors don't get enough love. So if you have a janitor at your school, which say good what morning. you do, say good morning. Bro, I remember in freshman year, I threw a water bottle in the gym. I was like, I'm gonna land it. Threw it up, the water bottle poof, just spilled. And I was like, sir, <laughs> I'll mop it. Don't worry, I got you. I, I, I see my middle school janitor sometimes at Chick-fil-A when I, I'm on my shift. And I'll be either making drinks or like cleaning the dining room. Yeah. And I see him through the window, I'm like, yo, bro, that's my man. That's my man. Nah, but like, I don't know, leaning back from janitors, like I know they have a life and like, they make pretty good bank. Besides, like, the whole janitor, janitor conversation, like, I want to deep dive into relationships. Being is, I filmed a podcast last month with one of my friends, but yeah, unfortunately, I won't be posting it. But I feel like this is a very nice conversation because every single week, me and Luis, I think in this table, there's a table over here. Yeah, there's, like, a table over there where it's, like, right outside of the, right outside of the bookshop. We always get, we started getting breakfast. Because I don't yeah. know, like, it's good to, like, you just sit down and talk with your friends, like... It's a super nice spot, like, no one goes there. Yeah, like, you get to talk. He gets to update him in his life, I update him in mine. I probably just thought, like, hey, I did this, I did that, surprise. Like, Randall, this email I got is, like, the same way I talk to me some person, like, yo, bro. Okay, check it out. Yeah, so if you ever go to STC, don't go to our spot. Okay, that's our spot. What's that one song by, like, that one guy, one of Will Smith's sons? Our spot. Meet me at the spot. What's that? Baby, uh, no, I want that song. Uh, I forgot the rest of the lyrics. Yeah, me too. I'm the worst guy to sing ever. Like, don't, don't ever put me on the spot. If y'all know what the song is called, put it 
in the comments. Or just DM me the song title, please. Yeah. I'll probably find it like when I'm editing. No, but yeah, like I just want to dive into relationships because I didn't get to post this in the last episode. Because we talked about this with <laughs> Luis. I named the episode Lovers Club. And no one caught the hint, but that was like the secret of my brand. Luis, Club? you modeled for that. But basically, like I want you to talk like, what's your thought on relationships? Because we talked about like Troy Bolting and that girl from yeah. High School Musical. We talked about dating your friends. But like, what do you think about like relationships in general? Relationships, I feel like relationships are like the most beautiful thing. Cause like, no, bro, you're cause the most beautiful thing. <laughs> Thank you, bro. All right, anyways. But sorry. back to what I was saying, relationships in high school, specifically high school and college, are like the best. Cause like, it's it's just two people who don't have money, that love each other for who they are. Like, it's not for money. It's not for like, oh, cause my dad owns this brand. Like, no. Like, you love that person because you love who they are. Nah, dude. The money part is funny. Like, I had, a, I think my first job I ever had was at Chick-fil-A. I've worked at four places before. So it was my church, Chick-fil-A, Crumble, and then Chick-fil-A again. But this time I got a raise. <laughs> but yeah, like basically, um, ever since my first relationship, I would get, I think I, think I talked about it with Luis's episode. This is Luis yeah. number two. The other one was Luis number one. Yeah, the... With Luis number one, I told him how I earned, like, I think, 100 bucks every check. And I would spend, like, all of it on, like, the relationship I would earn. And Money was, management, guys. Money, money management. management. I learned that, I think, now. <laughs> I think, like, I was like, surprise, yeah. it took you three jobs and, like, two years later to find out. But, yeah, relationship and money is, like, kind of weird. Like, as you said, like, I think feel like young relationships don't really depend on money. It depends more on the person, like how the person acts, how the person feels, how the person looks. Like, yo, I don't know. Like, that's I think that's the funny part of like high school relationships. Yeah. So I'm actually gonna get my first job in the summer. So. Donde? Well. No. Well, I really want to work in the summer, right? And I've applied to like five places apply to 10 that's how you get in like up like the number that you have like i'm gonna get five apply to 10 that way you have like times to the opportunity what's no, that like, one quote by michael scott you don't miss 100 percent of the shots you take that was michael jordan michael scott that was michael jordan we're getting it to michael scott okay but i actually had two interviews before i injured my knee it was a uh, domino's and subway bro you could have been a subway boy a sandwich artist. Bro, no, eat fresh. Eat fresh. Kid burn fresh every day. How did your like knee injury like affect you and like in any chance? I mean, at first it was painful, right? Cause when I first injured my knee, I feel like I wasn't gonna play again. Like I just lost hope in everything. And like my knee was just there. Like I wasn't sure how they were gonna put it back in, when, how. And I was just having like first and second thoughts about everything. And what people don't know is that an injury like that, especially when you're an athlete, can affect you mentally, like, a lot. Because there's been days where I forced myself to walk and it was painful. Yeah. Like, I think there's a time where I interviewed you when we were walking all the way over here. Bro, was literally, like, out of breath, dude. I was in crutches, yeah. <laughs> that was, like, three weeks ago? Two? Two weeks ago. ago. Two was... weeks ago. I mentioned a doc, but he was literally out of breath, like, you can't count like a tiny injury as something else where you're like, yeah. like, oh, it's like, don't worry, little scratch. Like, I think I could point the same thing, but like a breakup could be the same way as a physical injury because there's yeah. days where you don't want to wake up from bed. Like there's some like, days where you're like, oh, am I like, worth this? Like, can I do this again? Can I stand up? Can I talk to so-and-so? Like, what's the biggest thing I guess you learned from like a relationship slash your injury? Like, compare both of them and just tell me, like, well, emergency one. The thing with my relationship is that it was really toxic. Like, I'm going to be honest, it was super toxic. Like, like probably, like, the first six months were, like, like the honeymoon phase, pretty much. It was, like... Todo, todo fresita. Yeah. And then from there, like, it was just, like, just flat-out toxic. Like, we would be like, no, you did this. And then she'd be like, no, I did this. And then, yeah. and then there was literally, like, weeks where we wouldn't talk, like... We were taking so much breaks that we didn't realize that communication was what was really important from that. Yeah, because Luis mentioned it in the last episode that we posted, but like, 
if you want to be with someone, it has to be 100, 100. 100, 100. And I feel like that applies to your injury too. Like, if you want to like stand up, feel better and get better, you have to put 100, 100. 100% mental health, 100% physical yeah. health. Cause for me, thankfully, I only dislocated my kneecap. Like there's people that have like torn their ACL, PCL, MCL, and it takes like about a year to fully recover. Yeah. And sometimes I just go to my bed and, and I pray and I just thank God cause the injury could have been worse. So it was one like very like dark night, right? I was at the park with my friends from Memorial and uh, we were playing basketball, like like a pickup game pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I grabbed to grab the defensive rebound and like my leg landed like this and like my knee just flat out, like just gave up on me. Like, like I felt like I got shorter when I fell. Mm -hmm. Like I felt it and then I fell like this and I hit my head and my shoulder like that. And like, I was just there on the ground for like 30 minutes until like the, like the hospital came, like the ambulance. Yeah. Like your friends called. Wait, who was with you? The ones that called. It was these friends at the park. Their names are Alec, Rodrigo, all those. Like they're all great people. Yeah, and I feel like they're great because like they could have been like, oh, knock it off, like stand up, or you could have gotten more hurt from like your shoulder. Yeah. Like, but so, like, luckily things weren't like that extent. <clears throat> like, I feel like no matter what you go through, like it always could have been worse. So you, so you have to be thankful for that. Like, no matter how bad your situation is, it could always be worse. Yeah. And I feel like that's, I think the really nice part of friendships. Like, diving down from that, like, what do you think makes you and your friendships work? Just how you made you and your injury work and get better. How would you say you and your friendships work? I think with my friendship, uh, it's, it's just the, that bond, you know? Like, every time I'm with my friends, like, everything just goes away. Cause they they always make my day, you know. Yeah. Like whether it's making fun of my injury or making fun of me, like I feel bad because I just drew a drawing of you that says Luis the crippled Morales. Yeah, but, but I don't take it offensive. Like it's funny, and I know what your intentions are. Like you're a great dude, and mm. I love you for that. Yeah, it's <sighs> a lot to take in. That's a lot to take in. No, dude, I love that. Like, I feel like for me and my friend group, I have this really good friend group from church. His name is Robert, Adrian, and Christopher. Yeah. And I don't know, like, we're like that. Like, they'll tease me, like, oh, this guy, you spent, like, like $80 on the set of vinyls. Or, like, oh, when are you going to put me on Lover's Club? Or when can I do this? Like, we tease ourselves about our personal projects or stuff that we do. But like at the end of the day, like as long as you know their intention and what they're gonna do, it's like the nice part. And I feel like I see that in your friendships. Like every single, I think Monday or Wednesday before I, I go get breakfast with you, I go see your table and they're always goofing off and like doing like stupid things. Like they were literally throwing Lego wheels at each other the other day. And like today they were literally like, we tried Poppy for the first time. I Poppy's not the best soda. I felt low-key disappointed. Like, I watched my favorite YouTuber, Kelly Bocasa, drink poppy, and then I drank the root beer one today. I just went to the restroom. <laughs> For that soda, I had really high expectations. You were literally drinking, like, half of my soda. <laughs> no, because I thought the flavor was going to change. Like, like I had that much hope in that soda. <laughs> you were like... Mm. And it's not even that bad. Like, like the aftertaste is not there, but, like, 10 minutes later, it's it, like it's going to hit you. Yeah, like, it's gonna hit you in the stomach. I low-key want to sit down with your, the boys one day and be like, let's taste, test some drinks while talking about, like, some life. But yeah, like, I don't know, like, moving on from, like, friendships, nasty drinks, like, relationships, like, toxic relationships. That's something that I guess I'll <laughs> dive in more with my podcast with my friend Jay. Um, I have a lot of podcast plans. I actually changed the podcast. It used to be, like, for creators by creators, but I flipped it to be more for friends because I feel like re rela I can't speak relatability is something that Wait, I was more at our age like we want to see social media and be like hey I can relate to that guy talking about this relationship I want to relate to that guy talk about sports like I want this to be more relatable for people my age yeah. like a lot of people don't know and I don't say this online but I'm 18 that does surprise a lot of people I post something about you on my page and I have three people text me 
You're 18? I thought you were like 23. I was like, no, bro. Like, well, 23 is Some guy thought I was 21, 23. Those were the two ages that people thought. And like, you're... You're not that old. Yeah, you're like 17, right? Um, right now, I'm um, 16. As long as Centurion knows. I'm 16. I'll wait till you're 18. But... No, I'm kidding. <clears throat> I may be 16, but... For the MILFs, I'm 23. So, I'm like... <laughs> nah, but yeah, I'm like, just kidding, I'm just kidding. Like, that's but, something I really want to switch before. And it hits me hard, because like, this split second, I said, hey, I'm 18. Hey, I'm graduating this year. That's the part where it freaking hit me like hard. I was like sitting down. I think it's like three days ago. I was filming the intro to my documentary. I literally put on my cap and gown and I put on the cap and the split second I put the cap on. I literally sat down to tie my shoes and I was like, dang, this is gonna be me in like eight, six weeks. Yeah, like you don't realize that you're growing up until you miss the good times for sure. Yeah. Like, I remember the first day that I met you. Well, I we technically met online, first of all. Like, he texted me through the high school account, being like, uh, a no, college, here up. we come. Oh. And that's when I was, I think, a sophomore. Or, I don't know if I was a sophomore or junior. You were a sophomore at the time. Yeah, and I was like, this guy. Like, oh, yeah. And then now I'm like, becoming, like, almost graduating. I'm like, bro, like, I miss the time when like you were a freshman. I miss when I was a freshman. Like my freshman year ended with COVID and it's junior year, like the first day we were like all wearing masks and all that. And it made me reflect like a lot of things have happened. Like for me, I cherish all the French all the friendships I had, all the relationships I had. Even though like you said, like toxic relationships, like that's something that has happened to me, but like I learned to move on. Like because that's something I'm gonna take with me in graduation. Man, time. Wow. Bro. Like, when I walk the stage, I'm gonna keep it between me and this podcast and whatever friend or whatever watches it. When I walk the stage, I'm gonna I'm come with a party popper. So I'm gonna be when like- When you walk the stage, like, use the party popper and like just take a picture with, with your class was like- I'll be like- We graduated. We'll be like, Jonathan Castillo. Woo! And then they give me the diploma and be like- Boom! And then boom, just take a picture. And then I walk out. So, yeah, so for graduation, I hired two videographers, Dodo Pro Productions by Levi and Waldo Trilla, bro. My <laughs> homies are chilling. Like, when I do that party popper thing, yeah. well, one of them is going to fly a drone and then the other one's going to be filming. So I'm like, hey, bro, when I walk the stage, boom. Like, that's my shot. Because, <laughs> like, I don't know, like, graduation is, like, a really nice thing for me. Like, I know for your brother's going to be, too, because oh, yeah. he's graduating with me. Like, I met your brother first and then I met you through rock music. And I was so surprised when I found out you didn't like rock music. I was like, he's not like him. No. I don't know, like, that's something hard. Like, you're graduating like, in two years. When you first heard about me, like, what did you think I was gonna be like? Mini Reyes. In a heartbeat, I was like, Mini Reyes. And then when I met you, I was like, oh shoot, he's not like a Mini Reyes. He's like, like freaking like LeBron James slash Kobe Bryant slash super muscular guy and then I met you the first time I met you I took a photo of you and I posted on Instagram and I was like oh yeah you're going somewhere what picture was it the student spotlight one oh yeah the where your boys <laughs> were commenting stuff where I was like but with like the black mask and you took a picture of me you're like pondering nah but yeah dude like just before I finalize like this episode I like to call my episodes like a crazy maniac episode because first of all, I filmed them in different places. I never put them in one place. No, it's like, well, I try touching relationships and love a lot in my episodes, because that's something that in our age, we're gonna need when we're older. Like, I never realized that. Like, when I grew up, I was like, man, screw relationships. And now peak in age, we're like, oh dang, like, I'm gonna get them one soon. And you're gonna get them one soon. Like the high school relationships don't really matter. It's the ones that you get afterwards. Yeah. But like, putting all this like, with, with like a bow tie and all that, like, what would you say is like the biggest lesson that you learned all together from your friend friend groups and like relationships? I feel like, wow. Like, I feel like, like the biggest lesson that I've learned is that to always love yourself before you love others. Like, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm actually being serious. No, cause like, like there's always gonna be this, this one person that's like, that's like, oh, like, I've known him since, like, kinder, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, one day he just cuts you off, just leaves you. He doesn't become your friend anymore. Who's going to be there for you? Yourself. Yeah. Like, or your family. 
and even with family like there's people that have family situations there's people that are orphans mm -hmm. so and the person that you're always gonna have is yourself yeah like you always have yourself and i agree like there's friends who are gonna leave you there's family who's gonna leave you but like you always gotta sustain yourself but like there was this one friend like in sixth grade right like when i went to san antonio camp champions i actually met this great kid like he was super cool but he goes to school in san antonio so i knew that i wasn't gonna see him again but he influenced me a lot like in ways that you can't imagine yeah like there's still small people who influence you like for me the people who influence me and like make me do this is like those that i've grown up watching like i was grew up watching like my friend fed me and i was grew up watching you know, Aram, Cynthia, Lee, like Danny, like all these people that are around me I saw on social media mm. who like made me like be who I am. And like, I guess with or without them like leaving, like you always have yourself there to support you, to be your own entertainment, to be your own like, what's that word called? Inspiration. So I guess like I agree with you, like the biggest lesson I learned through like all the relationships I've been through. And I said this to other Luis, but I'll say it to you too, like, you have to, like, this sounds so cheesy, but my favorite YouTuber says it, and I never understood it until I turned this, like, 18. Sometimes you have to do what excites, bro. Like, ask that girl out. Ask the girl out, yeah. stay up at night, play with friends, so stay up at night. get in fights, play basketball, like, do like, whatever you can do, whatever you can do. You only live once, you only live once, so. Yeah, do like, YOLO. So, yeah. make the best out of it, honestly. Like, so I think that's the best way I can end it, like, just, do what excites. I said this in the episode with Matthew. I said it with Luis. I'll say to you, just do what excites. That's the best lesson that you can do. There's this one quote that really gets me every time in it, and it goes like this. <laughs> like, whenever you feel nervous or something, think of it as excitement. Because whenever you're nervous, like, you, you get like, all like shaking, like you have like those butterflies in your stomach. Mm. And when you get ex when you get excited, you get that same feeling. So whenever I get nervous, like, there's three seconds on the shot clock, like, it's me with the ball and the three-point line. Like, I'm going to shoot it every time because yeah. I have that confidence in me and I know I can make it. And even if I don't make it, like, I tried. And, yeah, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. By who? By who? Michael, Michael Scott, Michael Scott. If you watch The Office, you'll understand. Yeah, I think we're gonna let this episode be. I have yeah. to go to my class, you have to go to your class. I need to go to my class. These are like super random episodes. I try doing them every month. I usually post them on Tuesday and Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna watch these episodes on Spotify or YouTube, they're under Love Your Community. And we actually, we actually are revamping Love Your Community's Instagram, so tune in for May 1st. Follow our Instagrams, and yeah. Follow, yeah, and uh, yeah. Thank y'all for watching, you know. He's a great dude, so I highly yeah, great dude I highly recommend to follow him. All right. I love his community, John, Jonathan 23 Flicks, right? Yeah. And GNTN, I, yeah. yeah. And, but y'all yeah. get the point, y'all get the point. All right. I love you, J-Mart. J-Mart. <sighs> if there's one person in this world that I would date, it's J-Mart. J-Mart makes me feel a certain way. Look, I'm telling you, bro. You, me. <laughs> Javi's Alexis I feel like I'm missing someone Jade Jade <laughs> Jocelyn We all sit in the table We could talk to J-Mart Little cafecito and like I'll do flowers. anything to talk to him Jocelyn, please Let me please. meet him for once <laughs> Look, I'll put you flowers And I'll make him an iced latte I will buy him a large espresso for free When Large espresso. Large espresso, bro. It's like a coffee shot. Well, what's it called? Venti, that shit. Venti. Yeah. I get you a venti extra man. A venti no refreshing it from Starbucks. <laughs> All right, guys. But yeah, that's my name. J Mart, you better be watching this. Jade, if you don't send this to your dad. J Mart, if you watch this, my phone number is. Right. Da 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 da.